Hey guys, Dr. Sean here. We're going to talk a little bit today about blood pressure and some of the things that go wrong with it. Now, it's, it's been in the news here all this past month. And all you see over and over again, oh my gosh, we've got to change the statistics. We've got to change the studies. We have to revamp everything. What we thought was normal is too high. Now, we are in a, a world of the sky is falling, chicken little, here we go, run, run, run. And this is another example of it, in my opinion. Now, I'm not against understanding blood pressure, and I'm not against working on trying to normalize it. But the key is, is how. And we, we, we have, for so long, we run after the next thing, right? At first, it was cholesterol. That's going to cause heart attacks and stroke. That's all we heard. 300 used to be normal. Well, we're all dying of heart attacks and stroke. Lower it. 250. Nope, we're still dying. 200. Nope, we're still dying. Break the pieces up. Get the LDL down below 70. Get the HDL up. Try to lower the triglycerides. And what happens? Nothing. We haven't really seen a big change in there. right? Our overall mortality rate for heart disease is about the same as it's always been for the past 40 years. So what it tells me is that cholesterol is probably not the thing. So then what do you do? You're losing a battle. You find a different enemy. Hey, let's go after blood pressure. Now, blood pressure, obviously, from a, a medical standpoint, can be a problem. It can absolutely be an issue for you. But the key to it is understanding why the body would ever change its pressure. See, the thing is, we're treating this like a disease. Blood pressure, oh, it's a disease. It's not a disease. It's a way the body regulates function. And this is a critical piece. It's not like diabetes where you can say, oh, look, it's due to the pancreas failing. It's not like a flu where you can say, oh, this virus got in there. This is why we have it. When you look at hypertension, you look at blood pressure, there are dozens, if not hundreds of causes that can cause it, that can elevate the blood pressure. So we're now we're going to say, well, you know, 140 over 90 for the last 50 years was considered the norm. It's too high. Too high. Now they're going to drop it. 130 over 80, which now makes the normal blood pressure 120 over 80 pre-hypertension. Now, where's the problem with this? Now, if I were a conspiracy theory person and this and that, I'd look at this and I'd say, the problem, hmm. So we just took a large group of people who were normal, and now we said, hey, you're pre-hypertensive. So if diet and exercise don't lower your pre-hypertension, then it won't take long for someone to start writing a script for your med. Tens of millions of people will now fall under this umbrella. Now, what's the payoff, right? What do we get out of this? Do we get longevity? Do we get lower mortality rates? Do we get things like that? Yeah, if you have a ridiculously hypertensive situation where you're running a blood pressure that's 300 over 200, all right, I get that. I totally understand that. But if you're in someone that's 120 over 80, 130 over 80, 130 over 90, why? That's the key to this. What's the why? We always have to ask that. And there's so many times we just accept, well, because they tell us. What are they telling you? What are you getting out of this? So we go back to the common sense concept, right? What is the cause of all disease? It's stress, right? That's the idea. And that's why when you look at hypertension, dietary stress can raise it. Organic stresses, anything you put in the body or on the body can raise the blood pressure, right? Structural things can do it. Fatigue, exercise, running, all of that can do it. Emotions can do it. Emotional intolerances can do it. Electrical currents, vibrational energy, all these things can force the body to raise the pressure. So then we have to come back and we have to say, well, wait a minute then. So if that pressure changes with all these things, what is blood pressure? Right. So your body has to maintain normal. Somehow, it's trying to always maintain perfect health. That's what it wants. It just wants to survive. And it's got four key components that allow that to happen on a daily basis. It allows it, if it's cold outside, if it's too hot outside, if it's raining, if you're in water, you've got to have ways to protect yourself to stay alive. So blood pressure is one of those four. So is temperature. That's the second one. How about pH? We all know about acid and base balance. And finally, concentration of dissolved solutes. That's salts. That's cholesterol. That's electrolytes. We use these things to regulate what's going on inside. Imagine your thermostat at home, right? You've got your temperature and you set it at 70 degrees, but it's 20 below outside. It's really going to struggle to get there. It's going to fight all day long trying to stay there. That's what blood pressure and pH and temperature and those solutes, that's what that's all about. They're doing the fight. 
Now, your human body has 10 organ systems. Those 10 systems, guys, are designed to keep you alive. They all use those four pieces to do it. So when we see blood pressure as being elevated, we see blood pressure as going up in someone, your job should be saying, okay, which one of my 10 systems is getting pushed too hard? Which one of them is trying to fight back? Which one of them is requiring a change in pressure to deal with that? Now, here's where it gets really alarming. A study was done not too long ago. It's uh, the MR Fit study, the MRFIT, right? They looked at 350,000 middle-aged men. They found that 13,000 of them were susceptible to coronary artery disease and mortality. Now, in doing this group, they decided, you know what? We're going to lower the cholesterol on half of them. We're going to lower their blood pressure. We're also going to stop smoking. The other group, let's do the change your diet, eat healthy, try to be active. That's all we're going to do. So one group's going to get medicated and treated for these things. The other group's not. In the end of the study, at the conclusion of the study, it went 10 years. They spent $115 million doing this study. You know what they found? They're the exact same. The coronary artery mortality rate between the two groups was identical. It didn't change. So what does that tell you? We're looking for a thing, a this for that. We're looking for what is this one thing that's causing all this? There isn't one thing thing. See, in that control group where they were lowering the blood pressure and lowering the cholesterol, they weren't getting rid of their stresses. They weren't getting rid of the emotional stress they may be under. They weren't really changing huge dietary stresses they might be under. They weren't getting rid of structural, mechanical things that might be going on in their body. They were left unchecked. And so in the end of the study, it's kind of the same. See, this is what I'm trying to tell you. When we see things change, when we change statistics and we change numbers and we try to do this, you always have to be wary of, is it a cash grab? Is it truly for our overall health? And if it is for our overall health, is it really going to make a difference? Is it going to make this huge overall difference? I don't think so. I really, truly don't. I think until you decide to balance the body, until you decide to look at the body as a whole, it's got mechanical traumas. It has emotional traumas. It has nutritional ones. As long as we compartmentalize and chase individual things, symptoms all over the place, we're going to get that kind of result. We're going to get lucky every now and then and be like, wow, that really worked great. And a lot of times we're going to see nothing. It's about balance. It's about restoring whole body function. That's what the key is. That's the secret to understanding blood pressure. Find the cause, remove the cause, and restore perfect health. That's what I do. That's the McCaffrey method. I'm 20 years into it, guys, and this is why it works so very, very well. Thanks for joining me. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.